Welcome to Sustainable Sailing. Hi, it's Thursday, which means Jane will be here this evening, so I thought I'd better do some unboxing before she gets here, so I get to enjoy it myself. This is some tools. So, another Makita cordless tool. It's one I've been debating for quite a long time as to whether we should get it because decided in the end that having the jobs to do with the carbon fibre tubes means that it was particularly worthwhile at this point. So this is a um, finger belt sander. Um, you can adjust the angle and the sanding belt goes around there. Good thing is it's when you've got the belt going around here you've got both an end for sort of almost digging holes while you're sanding, a flat plate and then this section where the belt is sort of soft so for sanding outside of a carbon fibre tube to be able to get epoxy to stick to it properly that should be ideal. Not cheap, not supplied in all that many places. That was the first bit of unboxing. Second one is another thing from AI Plastics. This is more FR4 and it's the first time we've had FR4 that's flexible. This is two millimeters thick. Welcome back. It's Friday and I'm back again. And it's nice. We were planning to work on the solar for the back of the boat, but unfortunately it's a beautiful sunny day, but it's really windy as usual here. And the combination is not great on the aft deck. So we've changed our minds and we're working in the engine room. I started working here in the motor room with the motor lifted just partially, and I've got fed up of banging my head on it. So we've now lifted the motor right out. We can have a look at our positioning of the electric motor, resting on some beams, doubly tied, and sitting in beautiful isolation in our cockpit. So we've taken the motor right out now and put it on the cockpit seat. That's uh, the difference that Jane's able to just pull on the block and tackle and lift the motor and we can manhandle it, person handle it sideways onto the cockpit seat, which we did get the uh, diesel engine out ourselves a couple of years ago. And this is infinitely, infinitely lighter and easier. Yeah. But that will give me space to go and put the build hold reins on the port side. This morning I've managed to create the holes there and there. So this side we have good holes and better access now to um, clean all that up and block up the water so it doesn't go flow sideways there, which I'm much happier about as a solution. So now it's that side so I've got to get into the cockpit locker to get all that stuff out of the way to get access to drill those holes. Here I am in everybody's favourite place inside the cockpit locker. So I've got the oh, stuff from the tow rail cover, one of the wastewater tanks in here for company which does make getting out there rather more difficult. But the good news is we now have both the hole going that way into the deep bilge and that way through to the side bilge in the saloon. Let's see if we can actually get the camera so you can see all the way through. What it does highlight, well a couple of things really. 
super interesting. One, you can see by that discoloration there that this area of bilge which we cleaned and painted grey has had water puddling in it. So the fact that there were limber holes just there and a small one there were not enough to drain this part of the bilge. So it's the dehumidifier that's uh, dried it by sucking the moisture out. So having that limber hole there is a good thing. It will mean we won't get any puddle puddling around here. And here you can see how tight the gap between the end of this engine bearer and that bulkhead is. So there's no way I could have relied on that to get the uh, to drain that side bilge. So what I'm going to do is get some uh, small scraps of timber that will mostly fill that slot and then fit them with a thickened epoxy and then all of these we're just going to coat with epoxy get the whole thing as smooth as we can. It does mean that uh, we don't achieve the ideal of a downhill bilge all the way it's going to come up, up and around here a bit. Um, I don't think that's the end of the world if we're going up and down in waves it will make its way to the deep bilge and if it's more than just a trickle there um, it'll be high enough uh, the water level will be high enough to get round that corner so the net result is that we keep that area there much much drier there won't be any bilge water from the main saloon draining into that little gap which is uh, a really good thing it's Sunday and before Jane goes home today we're tackling some more jobs that make a mess in the aft cabin and that need two of us. So we're just currently Jane's taking down our somewhat temporarily fitted insulation which had accidentally got epoxied on and then we're going to be fitting these four backing plates for the mizzen shrouds and the main backstays uh, it's a split backstay so it's one each side that those go up under here and need one person pulling them up on deck while the other maneuvers them into place so we'll get those done and i think i'm going to spend the next week while i'm here until thursday night on my own doing more fiberglass work and not sleeping in this cabin there's a lot of work we want to do up here where the mizzen mast foot is and this isn't very well fastened in and as we cut away quite a bit of this bulkhead back up a bit here we want to do some strengthening there and then basically this molding which the, the mizzen mast sits on we want to beef up on on both sides of this bulkhead so that we feel confident that our mizzen mast isn't going to crash onto our heads we've finished sanding the deck head we've put these bits of line going through the deck so that the next job after we've cleaned it up is put thickened epoxy on the side you can see of these and on that side as well and as each one gets thickened epoxy placed on it we pull the string to pull it up tight up under there and then use some timber with uh, levers to wedge it up tight Jane's mixing up some thickened epoxy so that we can fasten these uh, chain plate backing plates on you can see i'm hopefully ready I've got my bits of string and timber so that when she's got the thickened epoxy on we can pull it up tight and you can see here just a reminder of one of the key reasons we're doing changing our chain plates are the inadequate backing plates in the past which caused this cracking in the gel coat once we've got the backing plates on a big one for those two a smaller one for that one same on this side then the only backing plates we've got left to fit are when we take everything off this side 
starboard side in the saloon. So there's one chain plate hiding under there, one there, and one there. But we also take off these three cleats because certainly on the port side, they turned out to be pretty corroded. And here, same as on the port side, we have this oddity. There's the bolts of the cleat, and there's two bolts that are not attached to anything. There's no nut on the other side. They just go a short way in as sort of a hole blocker. So no wonder we've had leaks. When we get round to it, we are also taking up this track here because it's been leaking and we're going to use uh, low friction rings and Dyneema like barber haulers to control our sails. Jane's probably nearly ready with the epoxy. Yes, she says so. So I'll get on to uh, pulling up my string when she's ready. Okay, there you can see my tensioners. Jane's done all the epoxying of that first two chain plates and those are keeping them nice and tight. We've got ooze on all four sides, which Jane has tidied up. So that's half of it done. Hi, it's Tuesday the 21st of June. I didn't do any filming yesterday, but let's look at where we've got to. I mentioned before, I think, that we're working, or I'm working on all the fiberglass work in the aft cabin so that we can get back to being able to sleep in here when Jane arrives. So, it's full of fiberglass at the moment. At the weekend, we fitted these two FR4 backing plates for the shrouds that come into this cabin. So we've got two on that side, two on the other side. These were our first attempts at the new backing plates and we went rather overkill. We've got a ply backing plate that goes the full length of the cabin and another ply backing plate on that one, doubling it up to 12 millimeters there. And then we've got the FR4 to protect the plywood. All plywood was coated with epoxy. And part of the logic is that back there, there needs to be support for a deck cleat as well. But we simplified things when we came to the main saloon and just used larger, thicker um, FR4 backing plates. Anyway, those are now fitted. The string there you can see is what was used to pull it up tight so that the, we got some uh, thick and epoxy ooze on all sides. Now, the next job is up there, the support for the mizzen mast foot. It was completely inadequate in our opinion. This piece of ply was fitted between the two bulkheads. So between this bulkhead and the original one there. And when we took the headlining off, this was actually loose. It wasn't fitted to anything. Now we've adjusted these bulkheads quite a lot anyway. We've added this piece here to square off the heads compartment. So you've got a bit more knee room and the door can be wider, which we need because that toilet didn't fit through the original door, which you need to do to empty it. And we filled in this head of the, what was the V-berth. You can see the different colored infill there, temporary infill. And then we cut open this bulkhead here to provide the access to what is now a Pullman style berth. And so we have a temporary step. This area will be a seat. So you can sit there with your feet on there and look out the windows if you want to sit and read or do your sewing or whatever. And we get a almost rectangular king size bed. What I'm doing now is building strength to replace this with something much better and to compensate for the fact that that bulkhead has been cut out. First part of that is I've cut that long beam there, which I will be able to through bolt through this column that we added here and one 
over there and I've added a second one to it here which is exactly the gap between the two bulkheads because of the thickness of that I've cut out little half circles here which will provide access to the nuts to bolt on the foot so these two will be epoxied epoxied together epoxied to the boat and bolted through these support timbers uh, this one here I'm going to then put some more fiberglass tape to attach this and make more of a like an angle support on the forward side I've got to avoid I've got uh, can you see it yeah that's one of the in there one of the bolts for the window we made the outside of that window oversized because we thought it looked better so this side I'll only be able to do from here up on the forwards on the off side I'll be able to go ouch all the way around there and then I'm going to put glass fibre tape to attach this to the hull to the deck rather and then here which is my next job and go it needs to go up first this is a backing plate it's a slightly odd shape because of using up what we had but that backing plate is the full width of this molding that was obviously put in to make increase the strength so that will be a backing plate that goes from about here right the way across um, and will be filled with thickened epoxy above it so that that's completely solid all the way through and then I will put some plywood between the backing plate and this beam so that becomes a solid connection and that will uh, again strengthen these where, um, where they're, they've been cut out for the bolts. Here is the mizzen mast foot which goes there and I've drilled out the six bolt holes now with a hole saw, 44 millimeter hole saw because the timber, the plywood core here was wet and I've gone out as I say 44 millimeters and that is dry and solid. This was the first hole and I didn't manage to judge the depth quite right so that went right the way through but as it'll have the backing plate on I'm not worried. Here you can see five old holes that were used for cable glands again they had all leaked and the core was quite wet to quite a large area around those so I've already um, taken out the wet core filled those with thickened epoxy so these six holes once this backing plate is in and I've used those holes with some string to pull that up tight they'll all get filled with thickened epoxy and then I think I'll put one piece of glass fibre cloth across the top and some epoxy to create a flat bed for this and then it'll be bolted through. What I'm going to do now is drill holes for that in the FR4 then I can pull it up from underneath or wedge it up initially with a with a pole check that fits properly and then I can get loads and loads of thickened epoxy on here so that it pulls up and is bedded over its full size so what when that's it's cent centered there you can see it, it's got a, a nice large area to spread the forces and that will as you saw be sitting on those beams which will be bolted and epoxied to the underside of this support arch so that should be a lot lot stronger first job is to work out what size bolts i'm going to want to to put through there 
think I may have bought some. Okay, some really good news for me. I found the new bolts. I've got 10 millimeter, which is slightly larger than the Imperial ones. So these holes just need opening a tiny bit. But fortunately, I've also got a brand new 10 millimeter drill bit, and I've got these new cheap countersinks, which I can just widen those countersinks a little bit so that that head fits in nicely. So I'm going to mark the holes, well, open up the holes here, mark the holes onto the FR4 and drill it. And to make that a bit easier, I've brought my cheap drill press from home. I had to do a repair with this angle iron here. So as the um, this fractured off, the uh, um, forge broke. So going to be able to make that drilling those holes a little bit easier, although I don't think the reach is quite enough to get to the middle of the FR4, so might have to do the last two by hand. Let's get on with the marking and drilling. What I've realised is it's all well and good marking as if this is going to be exactly centred on the backing plate. What I don't know is whether that is actually centred on the arch so when this fits tightly into that arch will that be in line with that hole so i'm going to go up and try and work that out now okay so i've got the fr4 wedged into place i can just about see the black mark i drew on the hole that's been large uh, is full size all the way through let's just go and look on deck and see how well that lines up with the center of the hole oh well i didn't quite position it far enough to port but in terms of a uh, fore and aft which is the critical dimension that's spot on i can go and drill all those six holes now fantastic and because nobody gets to see the Menai Strait and Bomaris in such beautiful weather. Tide's still going down, quite a long way to go out yet. But there's a bit of B-roll of beautiful, beautiful North Wales and the Menai Strait. I'm ready to put the thickened epoxy on this backing plate for the mast foot and fit it into place. I'm a bit nervous. I'm going to do a time lapse, I think, of doing this. But if it's terrible and I get all stressed, you won't see it. Let's just show you where I'm at. So I've got all my resin and uh, colloidal filler. I've got a large tub because for the first time it's actually really quite hot here and I want to keep the resin spread out so it doesn't kick too soon. I've got the plate balanced here with the bits of line to, to lift it up and the bits of wood to wedge it up. I've sanded and acetoned the area that it's going to. And one of the things I've realized is that this is not like uh, a normal backing plate in that I don't need to worry about spreading the load pushing down over the whole area. It's this area, the central area of the mast foot where the pressure down will come. So when I put the thickened epoxy in, I'm going to concentrate on the central area and the edges. And then I will have to do some clean up afterwards, no doubt, because it's going to go everywhere. And I don't really have anything suitable to put to catch the drips and leave space for me to work. Well, that 
wasn't as bad as I thought. So I probably will be able to put the time lapse up. But I'll have to cut out the bits where I was rushing on deck to tighten the string because nothing was happening down here. That's up. I'll take, I've learnt my lesson. I'm going to just let it go till it's a bit green and then I'll take that tape off rather than letting the tape get uh, fully glued on with the epoxy. It's got some gaps and I'm not entirely happy with that so I will drill some holes from the top and pour in some slightly thinner epoxy that will run into those gaps. I'll put some tape up first so that it doesn't come out. I'll do that before this epoxy has completely hardened so that I get a chemical bond. But that's nitpicking. This is going to be uh, so much stronger than what we had before and there is plenty of thickened epoxy in this key central area where the mast foot will be pushing down and where the bolts will be squeezing it. So that's good news. Um, I do need to get the holes themselves, those um, large um, hole saw holes, uh, filled as well. So when I make some more thickened epoxy, I'll do that. But first, it must be time for a coffee now. I'm just waiting for the epoxy holding that backing plate on to harden enough that I can cut the string and remove move that bit of wood out of the way and then I can do that filling from above. So it's got that balance, it's got to be hard enough that the thing won't fall off while not fully cured so I get a chemical bond. And while I'm waiting for that, I'm going to come where it's nice and cool inside and I'm going to do epoxy coating of all the bare plywood um, around all those bilge holes we've made and the gland holes. Let's look at what's been achieved today on Tuesday. So that's the backing plate for the mizzen mast foot, boxed into place and just left that bit of tape too late so it's stuck on firmly. I'll have to sand that off, scrape it off later. So backing plate is on and I have put the epoxy coating, one layer anyway, on all of those bits of exposed wood in those bilge drains. Done a little bit of epoxy filling down here to smooth that off. And the mizzen mast foot position has had a first layer of thickened epoxy filling those holes has slumped a little bit, so we'll need topping up. And these holes were made so that I could ensure that it was properly full on top of the backing plate. So that's ready now to have final filling, a sheet of fiberglass onto there and the mizzen, fast, mizzen mast foot put on it. And down there, you can perhaps see the two support beams have been epoxied and are ready to be installed tomorrow. Those support beams will go underneath the FR4 backing plate with some plywood filling the gap between them so that any weight coming onto the mast foot will go through the FR4, through the plywood, onto those support beams which will be bolted epoxied and fiberglass to the bulkheads and the deckhead so all the loads get uh, shared and spread out. I think that's all for this video. This shows the work towards being able to get the mast up with the Dyneema rigging which is critical to being part of an electric boat. We need to be able to sail efficiently. The Dyneema rigging is brilliant for sustainability because we can replace it anywhere and it's good for an electric yacht because we should improve the performance. That weight saving up aloft will help us uh, carry more sail. So that's it for today. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, comment and look forward to seeing you in the next video.